Okay, I think maybe when we get started, Neve, we see uh, lots of people are here to join us. So welcome everybody to our information session on the weather in Ireland and what to pack. So I'm Neve. I also work in the international office alongside Katie. I'm sure you've seen myself and Katie all over the place now for the past few weeks with our virtual meetups and our pre-arrival week and our activity in the Facebook group. So I'm joined today, as well as Katie, by Hannah. Hannah, do you want to introduce yourself? Hannah? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. There she is. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. My name's Hannah. I'm originally from the US, uh, but I've been studying in Galway for three years now. And I do biomedical engineering and I'm working on my PhD. Happy days. Thank you, Anna. Mm -hmm. So just to give you a run through of how today's going to work, I'm going to give you a very brief presentation on well, weather and what to pack in Ireland. Um, followed by that, Hannah is going to share some of her insights coming from an actual international student themselves and how she dealt with the change in weather and any top tips that she has for incoming students. So without further ado, we might just hop straight into the presentation. So weather in Galway. So Ireland has a quite temperate climate, but our weather definitely likes to keep you guessing. For those who arrive in August, we'll still be in summer. And August in Ireland typically has good weather with temperatures remaining peaked at between 12 to 19 degrees Celsius. And then as we move into autumn and September, the temperature starts to drop slightly, but it's still typically pretty dry. And um, the leaves start to turn gorgeous shades of red and gray. And Ireland September can be quite picturesque. It's really gorgeous. The temperatures might drop between 10 to 18 degrees Celsius also in this month. And then October is a really gorgeous month as well, particularly in the West. Although the rain may increase a little bit, the temperatures still do decrease. But if you dress appropriately, it should be fine. It should be fine for you. Temperatures in October typ typically range from between 8 to 13 degrees Celsius and the average rainfall is about 18 millimeters. And also it's worth noting that the daylight savings ends in the final week of October. So this basically means that the clocks turn back by one hour, resulting in the sun rising and settling one hour earlier. And then in November, it's our last month of autumn. The temperatures drop to an average of five to 10 degrees Celsius. And the average rainfall is around 60 millimeters. In Ireland, our winter starts in December, and with this comes a brisk change in temperature. So our winter months are December, January, and February, and January and February are definitely our coldest months. Um, ice and snow are not uncommon during these months, but again, because we're in the West, it won't be as harsh as other parts of Ireland, such as the East um, or the North. Temperatures on average range from three to seven degrees Celsius during these months and below freezing conditions are not unheard of, especially at night and during the dawn. So you'll definitely need your electric blankets. However, with March comes spring, which is a gorgeous time in Ireland. Average temperatures usually range from four to 10, 10 degrees Celsius. And finally, the days will be getting longer again after the winter months. And also daylight savings occurs in March as well. In April and May, the weather changes considerably with the final month of spring, i.e. May, definitely being one of our best months. Um, temperatures in May, in May can range from 7 to 15 degrees Celsius, although it's often much higher and especially in, in the last few years, May is, May is kind of our, our best month. Um, so it's really important to note that you might find the weather in Galway in particular because we're on the wild Atlantic way to be quite dramatic um, especially compared to your home country depending on where you come from. It can be quite windy here in Galway so you might find if you have an umbrella that the umbrella is, is blowing against you um, and the weather can change really quickly so 
it can be raining one minute and then 10 minutes later the sun is out it's shining and then in an hour it could be snowing so it's just really important to note that but we'll get into that when i talk you through on what clothes what type of clothes you should be packing so if we move on to the next slide um so you want to prepare and educate yourself to get an idea of what the weather would be like so some suggested platforms to check this out are met Erin. this is our weather weather channel and they give probably the most accurate up-to-date weather and also rt news is really good i suggest downloading the rt news app um just so you can keep an eye on what the weather is like before your arrival you know is it planned to be really wet is it planned to be dry that week um, and also you'll need these probably while you're here for the duration of your stay. So then what to pack. So it's definitely best to categorize your packing into light, heavy and rain gear. This way you can prepare it for basically every season. So durable tennis shoes, go always quite small and compact. So you will definitely be doing a lot of walking. Um, so durable tennis shoes, waterproof boots are essential. There are stores all over Galway where you can get high quality hiking boots and a lightweight jacket with a hood, again, so that you can layer this. A raincoat with a, with a warm lining ski jacket. So this is for the warmer, for the colder months during the winter. Active wear. So Galway, you'll find that a lot of people enjoy outdoor exercise. So again, bring active wear that you can layer. Pajamas, obviously, um, underwear and socks, bring a lot of socks because your socks will probably get wet. A swimsuit, so go in Galway, swimming is probably one of our most popular activities, even in the winter. So I suggest taking a few swimsuits if you like swimming um, because you'll, you'll wear them one day and then you need to get them dry for the next, so, so bring a few. Um, a doctor's, I'll touch on that in a minute. Short and long sleeve tops, again, just something that you can, light clothes that you can layer so you can be warm or cold. Leggings and long pants, button down shirts, sweaters and cardigans, socks, scarves and gloves. You'll definitely need the scarves and the gloves in winter. Tank tops and a day bag for when you go to the beach. So one key thing is don't overpack. Um, a lot of students kind of, think they need to bring absolutely everything with them but we have a lot of good shops but especially Dunn's and Primark and these are located all across the city so you know don't bring a load of sheets a load of anything because you can get these all here pretty cheaply and um, so we use twin three pin plugs and um, you will be able to get these in a Curry's or a DIY electrical store and um, we can maybe pop them into the chat as well on where they're located. And as I said, and I've probably said it multiple times in the last five minutes, but layers, layers, layers. Because the weather is so drastic and it changes so quickly, you need to bring clothes that you can get warm, you can heat up when it gets cold and then take off when it gets really hot. So and I'll just jump in, Neve. There's two types of three pin plugs. So I had. Can you see this one? So this is the type of plug that we use. So if you have an adapter that will fit that, you don't need to go getting one. Perfect. Thank you, Katie. So things to do in Galway. So there is plenty to see and do in Galway. And while it is true that you can get all four seasons in one day, you shouldn't let the weather hold you back from enjoying yourself and even not on the so sunny days. So knowing what you want to do and how to dress for the weather can help you make your stay and your activities much more enjoyable. So we suggest checking out these links to have a look and start planning on what activities that you might want to do in your first few weeks with us. So if we want to move to the next slide. So one of the key things to ensure a smooth journey is having all of your paperwork in order. Um, so some of the things that you must have on arrival are photos of your passport, along with your obviously original passport, your plane tickets, two copies of your offer letter and acceptance letters, a copy of your medical insurance, and a visa, if your visa, if it's required. So there are some 
specific COVID relation COVID related documentation will obviously these will obviously depend on your own situation. However, you'll need you'll either need a valid proof of vaccination or recovery from COVID, a negative or not detected results from a COVID PCR test carried out no more than 40, 72 hours before your arrival into Ireland, a completed passenger locator form. So this is key. All of these are on our website. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, we can pop the link into the chat and again, educate yourself on these. And then finally, the meet and greet transfer form. So all of these are on our website. The meet and greet transfer form, our completed passenger, the passenger locator form, and what exactly documentation you need depending on your situation. And then if we just move on to our next slide, our last slide is just feel free to ask us any questions. And, Katie's there. and then also our um, international mailbox. And last but not least, a big welcome to NUR Galway. So Katie, do you have any final thoughts? No, thanks Neve. I think you covered everything. Um... Perfect. Yeah, lots, lots to pack. But as you said, there's lots of good clothes shops around and everything. So if you do forget anything, you know, the city is really not that far away. Um, mm -hmm. So it's easy to just pop to the shop and pick something up. Yeah. And also, depending on what suburb you're in, and I'm sure most students stay in the, the same kind of places, there is a Duns in Nakanakara in the West Side. So you're never too far away from a good store. Um, you can rent bikes here as well, actually. Um, so, you know, if some people were considering bringing bikes. You don't really need to if you wanted to rent one. Um, I know other students do bring musical instruments. We have lo loads of different societies. So that could be something if you were, you know, really, really talented and you wanted to bring your guitar and uh, you're welcome to do that too. Absolutely. Now I might I might save all the questions because I see a lot of questions coming in. We might save all the questions until the end, and then we'll go through them. Um, Hannah, I might pass over to you. And do you want to share some of your insights? Yeah, sure, definitely. Um, thanks, Neve. That was a really good presentation. I think it really summed up most of my experiences, anyways. Um, so I just wanted to share with you guys kind of like I guess five topics uh, that I had written down. Um, and just some notes for each. So the first one being how to dress. Um, I know like being from the US and kind of being from the Southern part of the US, like the summers for me are about 35 to 40 degrees and the winters are very cold. Um, so the weather was just kind of completely different. It took me some time to kind of wrap my head around exactly how to dress for a different climate. Um, I know that sounds silly, but um, as Neve mentioned, I found that layers are key. I cannot stress that enough. Like, especially because you're going to be walking or riding a bike a lot of places, you're probably going to kind of work up a sweat. Like you're going to be hot from walking into the school. So once you get into the building, you're going to want to take off your jacket and your, your jumper, your sweater, um, and be in maybe like a t-shirt or something lighter underneath. But then it is, especially in the winter, it'll still be cold, or if you ever need to leave again, you're gonna need those layers um, and really protect yourself. Um, another thing I found is sometimes in the winter, because it rains a lot, if you get wet on the way in, it can take a long time to dry off. Uh, so I, I prefer um, to try to cover myself with as much waterproof stuff as possible. So I have a waterproof rain jacket. Um, I try to wear shoes that even if they're not waterproof, they are more water kind of resilient or resistant. So maybe a good pair of running shoes or yeah, like rain boots or something really waterproof is really nice for those winter months. And I even, I don't think everybody needs this, but I even have waterproof pants because sometimes I just hate getting soaking wet and then being in school all day, really wet and cold. And sometimes it's hard to warm up for me then. Um, but I don't know, most people don't use waterproof pants. That's just me. Um, and then, I have to say though, while the winters are a bit rainy, the summers are beautiful. Um, you get so much daylight and sunshine and it's just such a kind of relief after um, a bit of a rainier and darker winter. 
Um, but one thing that I felt was that uh, you might still need a jacket. Like I said, in where I live, it's 35 degrees in the summer. So you don't need a jacket. Like you don't want to be wearing all these extra clothes. But I think it is smart, even if you go out in the summer, just bring a light jacket with you. You never know, maybe there's going to be a little bit of a shower or just a little bit of wind. Um, and it's actually really refreshing. It's really nice to walk around in, go shopping in, uh, that sort of thing. But just in case you might get cold, I would have a summer jacket, if that makes sense. Um, and then as far as your, your winter coat goes, uh, I would make sure that if possible, it is both warm to some extent and waterproof. Um, I mean, you don't have to spend loads of money on like a really fancy coat or anything, but just try to get one that has some sort of maybe fleece lining or warmer inside or is somewhat insulating, but is also waterproof because it's going to be raining. Um, and a scarf can be really nice and gloves, so they keep you toasty. Um, and then as far as also, sorry, I skipped this, but for the summer, um, shorts and sandals are good but um, maybe you don't need that many pairs of them. Like I would say two, three, maybe at most would be good um, because while there are so many beautiful days in the summer, it's never, it's, it's almost never super hot. So you don't really need um, too many pairs of shorts. So if you're trying to figure out like what to pack, maybe leave those. And if you needed them, you can buy them here from, yeah, like pennies, like Primark or Dunn's um, really cheap. Um, and then the second topic I wanted to talk to you guys about was just, I kind of covered it, but the change in the weather. Um, so in the summer, if you're used to some place where there's, you know, like the dog days of summer where you're going outside and you're just absolutely baking and it's like painful almost to go outside, that doesn't happen here or in Ireland. So, um, it's a lot nicer. It's really nice to stay out late without COVID, um, and go to pubs, listen to live music, walk around town, hang out with friends. Uh, so the summers I think are probably like even better in Ireland. I really like them. Um, like I mentioned, the winter daylight hours are low. There's not a lot of daylight um, and it can be rainy. So I would recommend for especially the winter months, um, try to by that time set yourself up with, I don't know, like extracurriculars or something fun that you like to do because you don't want to be stuck inside all the time um, during the winter because it might get a bit lonely. But by that time, you'll have met so many people and you'll be involved in clubs. Um, and actually, I think you almost... <laughs> forget that it's dark or that it's rainy because you're out, you're going out, you're having a fun time. There's tons of student activities going on at that time. Um, so it's really fun. And then the only other thing for the change in weather is that the sun can be very strong in Ireland um, when it's out. So for those of you who need it and are pasty like me, uh, put on sunscreen because you will get burned. I like never wear sunscreen really back in the US because I don't know, the sun's not as strong, but it is like a laser um, sometimes in Ireland. So just make sure you cover yourself up. But it does feel nice, too, because when it's sunny, you're going to want to go to the beach and hang out outside. And then the third topic, as far as what to pack, I would say sweaters uh, is definitely key, like a good warm crew neck, um, something that's kind of cozy, um, but also practical. Uh, a lot of pants, I guess, I think most of the year you can wear pants in Ireland. Um, so maybe a pair of sweatpants. So when it's cold and wet and rainy, you can come home and change into something cozy, some jeans, um, athleisure wear as they call it. Uh, so, you know, just things that are cozy, but you can walk around in a lot. Tennis shoes, as Neve mentioned, or just good walking shoes in general, um, things that are waterproof. Um, a waterproof jacket um, and waterproof pants and shoes are nice if you have them. So like a light rain jacket, maybe for the summer and then the warmer one for the winter, like I mentioned. Um, and then t-shirts or tops that you can wear underneath of your sweaters, like I was talking about earlier. Um, but as far as, yeah, like sheets, pillows, um, duvet, you're gonna want a duvet, but you can buy all that stuff here really cheap. Like I, I bought everything from Dunn's and I still have it three years later and it's still working great. Um, it, it definitely keeps you warm, the nice big duvet. Um, as far as where to shop, uh, well, I actually really think that there, there's a weekend market in Galway City, and I think that it's really good for like hats and scarves and gloves. They're like hand knit um, most of the time, and then they're wool, and they actually keep you really warm, and they don't take up a lot of space. So I bought some like the first weekend I moved here because I was like, okay, it's a very different climate. I need to prepare myself better for this. Um, and I still use them like almost every day in the winter. 
Um, I actually have found that charity shops or like thrift stores, whatever you call them, are really useful because you can actually find good um, and pretty resilient brands. Um, so like things that have lasted and people are getting rid of, but will still last even longer. I've bought a lot of really kind of nice clothes that um, have lasted me a long time from the thrift stores, the charity shops. And of course, it's also, you know, good for the charities. It's good for citizens. Then it's good for the economy. And it's good for the environment. Those are all like side things, but they really do have really good clothes there usually. Um, and there's like eight or nine of them in the city center alone. Um, I find TK Maxx to be really good. Uh, they have really good clothes and it is for cheaper than what like the, the tag price normally would be. So sometimes you can get lucky and find a really like high quality like brand or something, but it's a bit cheaper. And then you can also just find good clothes that are pretty cheap. Um, I bought a lot of clothes there when we moved here. Um, and they do seasonal items. So like in October, they'll start selling the winter jackets and things like that. So I got a really nice winter jacket um, for pretty cheap last year. So I was pretty lucky. Um, I think the NUIG store has really nice hoodies. I just want to put that out there. Um, I wasn't told to say that or anything, but they really are so cozy. Uh, I bought one um, a couple winters ago and it is, it's like a hug. Like you just walk around feeling like you're so warm all day. Um, and I mean, it never hurts. Like if you see, cause you're coming to a new culture, a new place. If you see one of your friends or your peers, um, from Ireland, who's like wearing, I don't know, a shirt that you like, or a jersey that you like, or shoes that you like, just ask them where they got it. Um, because they the things are, um, and then just finally, I mentioned that shoe, there's a store called shoe. I think it's spelled C S C H U H or something like that. Um, but they are kind of like an outlet for shoes. So they have cheaper prices. And if you find yourself, you know, you've walked through the pair of shoes you came with, it's a good place to kind of get cheaper ones um, to replace them. And then just finally, if I could finish up uh, with my own experiences, um, like I said, I was, I thought, <laughs> for the different climate but it was so different I couldn't imagine it um so it's a bit um, what I was doing but I did learn quickly and you do get used to it and now it's almost like like, like uh, if I go home I'm like oh my gosh it's so hot here I can't stand it like I'm so much more used to the kind of temperate climate now and it's really nice um and I would say that especially in the winter being cozy is also key so think like I want nice warm sweaters or jackets or like sweatpants for when I get home things like that you want to have something that you can come home settle in maybe study watch some Netflix or something um, and just kind of relax uh, and stay calm um, and then to stay dry is to stay warm so try to stay dry if you can um, and then you might <clears throat> depending on say like what you're used to doing um, you kind of have to change your dress accordingly so like I really like hiking um, but obviously if you're hiking in the rain and the snow on the mountains in Ireland, it's very different from, say, the Appalachian Mountains here. So uh, you definitely can still do it. You can still do all the stuff you love to do, but make sure you prepare ahead of time and like bring the appropriate clothes. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah. And then finally, on talking about planning ahead, as Neve mentioned, the weather can change a lot. So if you know it's supposed to rain from two to three or whatever, don't go shopping at 1 30 because you'll probably still be out you know don't go get your groceries then wait until it's supposed to have a clear patch and then go then because you'll just it'll make your life so much easier if you're not soaking wet and walking home like carrying all these things so definitely stay connected with the weather apps and rte news and like try to plan accordingly but once you do all those things you know and you try to you wear the right clothes and everything it's great. Like the weather's amazing otherwise, and everybody's so nice and there's so much fun stuff to do. Um, and you'll get used to it really quickly. Honestly, I promise you will. It's not that bad. It's, it's kind of nice actually, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's all for me. So if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to throw them in the chat or anything. Thank you so much, Anna. I think you touched on so much there. Um, and what you said is so true. Like, Although the weather is quite dramatic or, you know, you do get used to it. And yeah. after after a month, you're just like, well, I know this is how it is. So you prepare, you know. Exactly. 
exactly i like what you said about you can still you know do all the things you like you just have to dress accordingly for yes. it and exactly one thing that a question that came up and i was going to mention it um go is not milan but it's still a very um like it's a very student focused city it's a very touristy city so style you know we see styles from all over the world so it's a really comfortable city to be yourself and to express yourself through your style if that's something that you like to do you don't have to adhere to a strict dress code there's you know colors are welcome and monochrome is welcome so really it's about being comfortable and being who you are I think when it, when it comes to um, packing for more formal wear like for example if you're going out for dinner um the dress code is not strict um it's you know i know in some clubs in other parts of the world you're not allowed in if you've got sneakers on it's generally not like that here but you'll find that most people who are going for dinner or out dancing will will wear um like casual formal you don't need to go super over the top um, there'll rarely be a black tie event, but you you can, you know, we have a joke, jeans and a nice top. Uh, it's kind of casual dressy. Yeah, very well said. Yeah. Um, how about you, Nee? Do you have any thoughts? Um, we might fire through some of the questions because some of the questions are quite similar. Um, I just want to touch on one thing because I'm seeing it a lot come in about the COVID documentation. So if, I think there was, some people were confused. If you're fully vaccinated, and Katie, feel free to jump in here at any point. But if you're fully vaccinated with a recognized approved vaccine, you don't require a negative PCR test coming into the country. Your, COVID, your vaccine, your fully approved vaccine should suffice, will suffice. That's yeah, correct, yeah. <laughs> um okay so i'll pick out a question here is there a limit on the amount of suitcases we can bring to the greet and transfer service i don't believe there is there isn't but they have asked that students are reasonable because in it the buses aren't all the same size you might be on a small minibus or you might be on a really large one. And if you come with eight suitcases, it might mean that somebody else doesn't have room for their suitcase. Um, you definitely won't need eight suitcases. And I know when I traveled for the first time um, to study abroad, I had 50 kilos with me and that was way too much. That was two big, huge bags. And I needed, I, I, I I didn't need half of it. So I know you won't need loads and loads of suitcases. Um, but there is no limit, but they have asked that students are reasonable. And I might, that's a really good point. I might add to that. Um, you might find in your student accommodation you or wherever you're living, you don't have room for all these suitcases. You can't really store them someplace. So definitely minimize it if you can, because you don't want most of your living space to be empty suitcases of your stuff. Okay, um, I'll grab another question. Um, so what's the nearest mall to, Enio, to Galway? So there's the Galway Shopping Centre, which is in the city, um, but there's also a high street that has all unique, or uh, not unique, but like high street shops. Um, so we don't have like a massive mall, like, um, like there you are in Dublin, but they're more one-off shops. So you can look up the Galway Shopping Centre um, and then there's a few other um, like retail areas that have uh, like a hardware store, a pet store, Dunn's, which is groceries and clothes, a pharmacy. And there's a few of those locations around the city um, and they're all, you know, all built up student areas have one kind of nearby. So another student asked, I thought this was a good question as well. Um, are there any good sports shops in Galway? 
And there are. So there is JD Sports, Avery's Lifestyle Sports. Um, those are the three main ones. And I can pop them into the chat. And as well as that, you can get sports gear in TK Maxx, which is, as Hannah touched on, cheaper than the branded products. So we would suggest checking out TK Maxx for branded and There's also Sports Direct now, which is new. Um, and they have, like, you can get even things like tennis rackets or, you know, bike helmets, um, gum shields if you're playing contact sports. So that's a really good place to check and, and the prices are much cheaper than in um, the main high street shops. Um, Hannah, you might be able to answer this question. Um, I can't find it now, but somebody asked about the temperature inside the buildings and heating is on in the um, university buildings. Yeah. Um, I guess to a certain extent it might change between buildings, but for the most part, it's usually pretty toasty. Um, I found like, say I was in the engineering building and there's a couple computer labs and when that's where most people work. So when they're filled with a lot of people, it gets pretty warm. Uh, so like we, even in the winter, we were all working in t-shirts, uh, which is another reason the layers thing is important. Um, but that being said, like, it's kind of nice that it's warm because when you're coming in from the outside and the wind and the rain, like you want to be cozy and, and toasty. So um, don't worry about being cold inside the buildings, um, but definitely like layers once again, very important. Um, you've just randomly, it's popped into my head, but um, there's water fountains all over the university where you can, where you, if you bring a water bottle, um, like a, a stainless steel one or a glass one, you'll be able to fill your water bottle so that you don't need to buy bottled water um, everywhere you go. Um, so that's just another handy tip. Um, somebody else asked, oh, actually, I like this question. And Katie, you can definitely answer this. Is there a camping culture in Ireland? Like, do people go on hikes and camp somewhere? Yeah, it's something that um, I've started to do a little bit more this year. Um, you definitely can, and there's nice places to camp, like even just an hour outside of Galway. So if you rent a car or make friends with somebody with a car, um, Connemara is lovely, and there's nice hikes to do that are not too hard. Um, you just need like a general level of fitness to do them. Um, but even there's nice walking trails all around the coastline so you know it doesn't need to be like super hard mountains to hike that you're hiking or anything and yeah lots of people wild camp there's generally um leave no trace ethic when you're wild camping and um, so you know you make sure you clean as you go don't leave, it, leave any trace of you being there and then there's lots of really nice campsites around the country as well that are um you know serviced and there's nice facilities and everything so yeah you absolutely can I think there's a camping shop in town that sells like pretty decent and fairly reasonable camping equipment as well. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring all that kind of thing with you unless you're like a super camper at home and you do it all the time. Um, you can generally beg and borrow and, you know, buy cheap equipment. There's one question here, where can we purchase reasonable utensils at a reasonable price in Galway? Um, so Dunn's is really good for um, homeware and um, there's another shop called Home Store and More that's pretty cheap or if you're staying in quarantine for two weeks you could look on Ikea and get some items delivered while you're while you're here and waiting um, but Home Store and More is probably the cheapest. Um, somebody asked as well where can we rent bikes? So there are a good few bike places around the city. Um, there's a place called Europa Bicycles. There's Kearney Bicycle Sales and Hire. There's Westside Cycles, Richards, Walsh's and Cycle Goy. But I actually, we have a pre-arrival booklet coming out at the end of the month. And there has a full list of where you can get bikes in Goy um, alongside with the addresses. So there are, there's about eight of them places that you can get them. We also have those around the city, those Coke Zero bicycles. 
um, the ones that you can rent for a few hours if, if you don't want to commit to renting a bike or buying a bike. Um, so yeah, there are definitely loads of places to get the bikes. Um, there's one question, can you suggest about medicines and importantly about vitamins since it's not so sunny during winter? So um, lots of doctors now are recommending vitamin D for anybody living in Ireland during the winter months. It's definitely not sunny enough. Um, and then beyond that, um, we recommend that you bring any medication that you um, need to take with you or find out if you can get that same medication here. You could phone up a pharmacy. There's lots around the university um, and speak to your GP. We have a health, uh, health center on campus. So, you know, you could always touch base with them, say, hey, I'm coming. I take this medication at home. Will I be able to get that there? Will I need to come into you for a prescription? So there are some things that you might want to find out before you leave in case you need to um, bring a couple more prescriptions with you. And there are some medicines as well that you might not be able to get in Ireland that you can get in your home country. So do check out if there's anything that you uh, regularly take. In terms of like paracetamol and ibuprofen, um, general first aid, like you can get them in pharmacies uh, and there's plenty of them around the city. Thank you, Katie. Um, somebody as well asked, should I bring my hot water bottle? You can get them cheaply, like in, in pennies or duns. So for the sake of two or three euro, I'd, I'd leave that at home because you can get them and it'll free up some room in your luggage. So nice to have though. Oh yeah. Oh, you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll definitely want it. <laughs> Um, somebody asked as well the documentation, the travel documentation, the COVID stuff. Should you have a digital format or an in paper format? The digital format is okay, but we would suggest to have a paper format just in case something, God forbid, your phone would die or anything like that. Um, it's probably best to print out everything and have a few copies of it just so that all your bases are covered. Now, I think that you won't get a receipt of the greet and transfer form that you submit, but you will get a receipt. So you could just keep this receipt on you handy. You don't need to print out the form. Uh, there's a question here about SIM cards. So do you still need another SIM card if you come from within the EU? since it was mentioned somewhere that we would need an Irish SIM card. So I believe that um, among countries in the EU, there are no more roaming charges. So you might be able to use your home SIM card, but I would check that with your home network provider. Mm -hmm. um, if, you are coming and, if you are coming and do need a SIM card, make sure that your phone is unlocked before you leave your home country. Um, Students traveling through the greet and transfer service can pick up a SIM card from that desk. So it's really nice if you go into quarantine or isolation um, for a couple of days or two weeks that you will have a SIM card. You will have, you know, a way to call a taxi when you're on the bus um, or a way to let your family know that you've landed safely if your, you know, if your network isn't working. Most places have free Wi-Fi as well, like even the buses. So you'll be able to um, connect to the Wi-Fi uh, on the bus down. Um, not every bus has um, all power sockets. Uh, it's, it's not consistent on public transport. The trains generally do have somewhere where you can plug your phone in, but it's not consistent on buses. So um, a power bank is always really handy to have charged in your bag um, for when you're making a long journey like you'll all be making. Definitely. Um, another student has asked here, when will we, I think, receive our student ID card so we can apply for a, an RIB? Um, you will get your student ID when you register. Um, so you can either register online or in person. And I'm pretty sure that you'll have to go. I'm not sure if they send the student ID cards out. So you will go to register for your RIB when you arrive into the country. So when you get here, registration will open, then you'll go and get your student ID card. 
and then the RIB takes place, I think, in the last two weeks of October. Um, so yeah, I think that answers that. Um, somebody has asked, are there any dress up events that we need to attend and pack for? Um, so kind of around different celebrations throughout the year, um, you might be invited to a formal dinner in the university. For example, there was one last year around Christmas time. Uh, maybe it was just a quick meetup. I can't quite remember, but there might be that like going forward, you know, it's, it's restrictions ease a little bit more. So you could pack for that. And um, there's Diwali celebration every year for our Indian students. And that's a really big event. Um, and I know there's lots of traditional dress uh, at that event. So you might want to bring some um, something from your own culture. But that goes for everybody, you know, that has different dress codes and different cultures. It's a really nice way to mix with people. Um, and it's a really nice way to introduce them to your new your culture as well. So you, you could bring something like that. Um, somebody asked as well, once we open a bank account in Ireland, are there any apps, internet banking, for which we can use a easy payments? Absolutely. Um, bank of Ireland and AIB, but I, I, I know for myself, I'm with AIB and their mobile banking is super easy. So you just download the app, you put it on your phone and you can tap, tap, tap. <laughs> it's very easy to use. Uh, somebody's asked, do we need to fill in the meet and greet form even when we won't use the free transport from the airport? You don't need to fill it in, but if you do fill it in, you could make a note to say, don't need the transport, I'm making my own way. We would encourage everybody to check in, um, to check in with the desk, you get your free SIM card. And as well, it lets us know that you've arrived safely. Um, we are waiting for all of you. We are you know, making sure that you get here. We are wondering where you are. So if you check in, it just lets us know that you're on the way to us. And um, so if you can check in, please do. Um, somebody else has asked, even those who have to do the mandatory hotel quarantine can go to the meet and greet desk and get a SIM card. Yes, yeah, so when you finish your mandatory hotel quarantine, you can go back to the airport and avail of the meet and greet service. Would I be correct in saying that, Katie? Um, you can, I think you can go before, I think you can go before you go to mandatory hotel, hotel quarantine. It depends on what happens when you get to the airport. Um, that's something that we can look into and update you all on, definitely, whether you can pick it up or do, if you have to wait. So we'll get back to you on that one. Oh, yes. The SIM card part, yes. But they can avail of the meet and greet after they complete their mandatory yeah. hotel quarantine. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so somebody's asked, how do we know if there's a bus available at the greet and transfer desk? When you fill out the form, you will alert the greet and transfer service that you're coming and they will they will either have a bus waiting for you. You might need to wait an hour and they'll put you on either another one of the greet and transfer buses or they will put you on. Um, so that's a, a private service or they'll put you on a public service. Um, and those buses go every hour, every half hour to Galway. So I don't think you'll be waiting too long. And um, if you arrive in after a certain time, you may they may send you to a hotel for an evening before you um, before you're transferred to Galway or wherever you're going afterwards. Um, I just want to mention because it came up yesterday. If you're traveling to Ireland by ferry, you won't arrive into Dublin Airport. You'll arrive into uh, Ross Lair, which is in Wexford, or you'd be arriving into Dublin um, port. So you don't have the option on the greet and transfer um, form to fill that out. But what I would suggest is you make your own way from the ferry port to Dublin airport, and then you can avail of the tree free transport to Galway then. So you won't get your full journey paid for, but you will get the, the part of your journey from Dublin to Galway paid for and you'll have somebody there waiting for you and making sure you get to the right place. That's it, just if you're traveling by ferry. Um, somebody else has asked, do we get student discounts on shopping stores and how do we avail of it? So certain stores, mostly um, retail or closed stores will give you student discounts. 
but not all shops will like grocery stores don't really do student discounts and um, how you avail of it is when you register and get your student id card you just have to ask the people at the counter i would suggest asking wherever you're doing your your clothes shopping do you have a student discount and then just have your card ready to show they'll only give it to you if you have it though handy to show them um, and there'll be a couple of in the pre-arrival guide that Neve mentioned there's a couple of restaurants and shops that are going to do discounts especially for you all that Neve has arranged um, so you can keep an eye out for them and you'll be getting that this week or next week maybe um, um, I, sorry go ahead Neve. Um, you mentioned about bringing sheets and towels. How about heavy blankets, comforters? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest bringing heavy, heavy blankets. Um, would you, Katie? No, um, I don't think so. Like you can buy, um, like a throw for your bed for twenty euro, maybe. Like as in, um, a fleece blanket, you know, that you'd throw on your legs if you were sitting on the couch. Or, you know, if you wanted an extra layer on your bed um, and then duvets might be a little bit more expensive, um, but are still kind of reasonable, like if you buy them in Duns or Pennies or Home Store and more. Somebody else has asked, where can we find the pre-arrival guide? Once that's fully completed, it'll be up on our website. Um, so keep an eye because we'll publish it on social media. So you will see it and it'll be in our email communications as well. So once we have it, you will too. Um, there's a nice question from Aurora. Are there yarn stores if I wanted to knit my sweaters and scarves? And um, there are. Um, so there's a couple of nice cute little ones in town. Um, and yeah, you just, if you, if you Google um, Anthony Hickey, it's this one, and there's another one as well. I can't quite remember the name, but if you Google it, you'll you'll find them. Yeah, I think Hickey's is a very good one. That's in the shopping center. Um, they have like any craft thing that you could ever need. It's really nice, and they're very nice, and they do a student discount. Oh, good to know. Somebody else has asked, I'm still not clear about how to register for GNIB and the PPSN card. So you, when, when you arrive in Dublin airport, your passport will be stamped. And on that, it will say, it will let you know how long you have to register with GNIB. But if you're a first time student, don't worry about this because the international office will contact you directly, giving you a date for your appointment. And they will let you know exactly what documentation you need. Um, your PPSN, you can only apply for a PPSN if you have a job, as far as I'm aware. Um, I'm just going to double check that, but it's if you have a job, you'll need to show proof that basically that you need a PPSN. Um, if you're wondering about the PPSN, PPSN for vaccines, you can still avail of the vaccines even if you don't have a PPSN. You'll just have to ring a call line. But that's on our website as well, if you want to have a look at that. Um, I just want to double check the procedure for a PPSN, but I'm pretty sure it's only if you... You're right, Neve. So you have to have a job to get one. Um, but employers in Galway will be fairly used to students coming, students from other countries coming to work here. So, you know, it will be really no, no problem to pair a letter for you to say this is... Our student um, they're going to work here for this reason um, sometimes the officer in the PPSN office might come back and say you know what will you be doing at work and what date will you start your employer should should include that information in the letter that they write um, but generally it, it, they're not hard to get once you do have a legitimate um, reason to have work um, one student has said it would be helpful if you could give more information on the meet and greet desk. Do we get a contact number for the person at the desk? As I am aware that they'll be at both arrival terminals. No, you won't get a contact number because the two desks will be there and will be manned by people from, um, I think it's 4 a.m. to 12 p.m. So 
there'll be somebody there all the time. I think there's no flights into Dublin airport between 12 and four anyway. So unless your flight is like super delayed, um, there should be somebody there. And if there isn't somebody there, um, you know, you can send an email to one of us um, or just wait there for a little while. There will be somebody there. Um, somebody else asked as well, what's the last stop? So the last stop is at Carb Village. Um, so the greet and transfer service will pick, will pick students up. They'll drop them at GMIT, which is another college in Galway. Um, they'll drop them to the cathedral for students who are staying in other locations that are not campus accommodation. They'll drop them to Goldcrest and then Cara Village will be the last stop. And Cara Village is where students who are availing of the free um, self-quarantine accommodation is. So, so lots of students will be, will be going there. Um, another student has asked, I'm still confused about the COVID. Sorry, I just want to get... I'm still a bit confused about the COVID measures. Do you still need to self-quarantine for five days, even if you're fully vaccinated? No. So it depends on where you're coming from and it depends on your own situation. So you need to check our website for that. Now I do, I have received a new infograph today, which will be um, putting on our website. It will be there tomorrow. So if you're still a little bit confused, check this infograph and it's just, you know, it's it's kind of one of those trees. If I am fully vaccinated and coming from this country, I need to do this. If I'm not, I'm coming from this country, I need to do this. So check back there tomorrow. Um, and again, you can always email us with your individual situation. It's kind of hard to answer every single one here, um, but hopefully this infograph will help to clear some things up for you. Um, a student has asked, does Galway have a good hobby stores for knitting, painting, drawing, sculpting? Yeah, always a really, really creative place. Uh, it's home to so many artists and lots of artists come um, from all over the world to Galway. So there's loads of good stores. Um, yeah, you can, you can pretty much find all your crafts here in Galway and pick up some new hobbies as well. There's also some nice classes. There'll be lots like through societies in the university, but also through things um, like the Galway Arts Festival, and um, some community colleges around the city will also run classes for different hobbies. If you find yourself with lots of time on your hands, I'm sure you'll all be kept plenty busy anyway, but um, there's always those options there. Um, this is a good question as well. And I think it's really good considering we're obviously international students, people are coming from different places and the dress code can be quite different for different universities. Do we require formal shirts and blazers for college? Anna, do you maybe want to answer this one? What are your insights on this? Yeah, um, well, at least in my experiences, no. <laughs> you can kind of wear whatever you want to wear. Um, and like it is a way that you can express yourself however you want to express yourself, whatever you're comfortable in. Um, if you want to bring a little piece of home and the style from home, bring that with you. Um, it's, it's literally whatever you want to wear. Um, the only time I could ever think of something to say if you had to give a conference, maybe like a talk at a conference, or if you were doing an interview, it's nice to have a nice top or if you really wanted to go out like a, a suit or like something more formal, you know, um, but otherwise, like everyday kind of wear, you can wear whatever you want. Definitely. And just as well, because I just finished college as well, the only time that we had to wear fancy or a shirt or a blazer and it's totally up to yourself but would, would be if you're giving a presentation so a graded presentation you know some lectures will just for the overall um it might be good in that instance but I'm sure you'll hear about that closer to the time um it's something that we're going to touch on tomorrow with just you know if you're making a list of what to pack today if you're searching for a job in Galway, say you're looking for a part-time job in a restaurant or in retail, generally you don't need to wear a shirt and tie if you're going to an interview, but you do want to look respectable and smart. Um, so that's, you know, you can pack that style of interview clothes. If you're going for an internship, 
if you're attending a recruitment fair, there's some on during the during the um, year through the Career Development Centre. I, I would wear a blazer. I would wear a shirt. Um, you want to look as professional as you can because often, um, you know, first impressions do make a big difference, and you want to look neat and professional. Yeah, absolutely. Um, somebody else asked, what are the documentations required from the university when opening a bank account? To open a bank account, all you will need is your passport and your registration statement with your Galway address. So you'll need to print this off um, from your student account once you register. There might be additional documentation that the bank require, but they'll discuss that with you in person um, at the time. So I wouldn't worry about it just yet. And then once you open a bank account, you should receive your bank card and a PIN within about a week. Um, there's actually a new video up today. So just above where you clicked the link to join this meeting, there's another video about registering GNIB, opening a bank account. Um, and so you'll get all this information now and you'll get it again through orientation through the pre-arrival guide. But it's a nice way to begin to familiarize yourself with all the things you'll need to do because I know that there is a lot to take on board at the start so you can always come back to these videos time and again and don't worry because you'll get this information again in a couple of weeks at orientation. Yeah and somebody else has asked until what day I can fill out the meet and greet form. They finish on the 4th of October I'm pretty sure. But you have to fill it out seven days before you travel. Um, so as soon as you know your travel information, just just fill it out. If you're availing of the free accommodation um, for self quarantine in Car Village, that has to be started by the third of September. Um, I can't quite remember if it needs to be finished by the third of September, but that date is on our website anyway. Um, they are filling up quickly um, I was speaking to them today. So if you are thinking about it, don't think too long. If you do want to avail of it, you know, just if you know your travel plans, just book, just go ahead and book it. Mm -hmm. um, we've just gone three now, so we might just answer one more question. And then if you have any more questions, we popped your email addresses up there. Feel free to reach out to us. As well, don't forget that we have another event tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a getting a part-time job workshop. So we'll have a short presentation again. And then we have a citing and referencing workshop, which will be really good for you if you are anxious or wondering about how am I gonna do academic writing? It's different in every country. What's it like in NUI Galway? That workshop is gonna be really, really helpful. And then I think I might have seen a question as well about culture. Um, in the chat on Friday, we have our culture through comedy workshop, which I'm personally really excited about. Steve Bennett, our host, is really funny. Um, so yeah, any final thoughts? Thank you, Marhan. Um, just tomorrow's um, getting a job workshop is just going to be a quick one. Um, we won't be able to go into as much detail, but we will because we're just under time constraints because the citation workshop is actually going to be super beneficial for you all um, in terms of what the English Language Centre offers. So, uh, so it won't be so long tomorrow from us, but Jim from the English Language Centre is going to give a brilliant workshop. So I, I would encourage you all to join in that one as well if you can. And we can touch on these things again at orientation if you found them helpful and um, we, we can do some more um some more chats like this okay. and i guess i would just say um you guys are gonna love ireland and you're gonna love galway and nuig is a great school like i was supposed to stay here for one year for my master's and three years later i'm still here and i don't want to leave so uh, I hope you guys are getting excited. It's a great place to live and be and study. And yeah, I'm excited for you guys. You're going to get to experience it fresh for the first time. So enjoy. <laughs> thanks, Anna. Thanks for joining us. No okay. worries. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks a million, Hannah. We really appreciate you taking the time today to join us. And your insights have been so valuable. So and I think based on the chat, I think everyone feels the same.
So we might close up. That's okay with all of you. Thank you all for coming. And the session is, has been recorded, so it will be on our website either today or tomorrow. Okay? Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.